At 30, England's number eight Billy Vunipola can boast four Prem titles, three European titles, a Six Nations Grand Slam, and he's played in a Rugby World Cup final. And yet the last few years have been very up and down. He was dropped in 21 by Eddie Jones and went through seven months of near daily contact with a therapist in order to make his way back. Had a good 22, and in 23, Steve Borthwick didn't include him at the start of the Six Nations. So what is his plan to make it back in time for Rugby World Cup 23? How will he do it this time? When you type in your name and your surname yeah. in a search bar, do you know what the first thing is that comes up after that? Wait. School photo. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. At the time, I thought I was the same size as everyone. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> no, that's how I felt. Come on. That's how I felt, because I was surrounded by all these kids, and I was just like, oh yeah, I'm just a little bit stronger than everyone. And then you see the picture, obviously I'm massive, and then there's another one where we're getting the medals and I'm nearly the same size as the coach. I think I was like 10, maybe 11. But yeah, it's, I remember the day that they asked to show them photos. They came for an interview, I was like maybe 18, 19 at home. We thought nothing of it, especially back in those days. It wasn't as, like social media wasn't as big as yeah. it is now. And my mum was like, oh yeah, this is a nice picture. And I was like, yeah, it's a nice picture. Now it's like, obviously, like you said, it's the first thing that comes up on the old search engine, but we made the decision early doors. I remember, and my parents sacrificed a lot to, to help us to get our goal that we set out for ourselves. If you had to summarize in a sentence why you live here, because mm. you could live anywhere. I mean, you could have gone back to New Zealand, could have gone back to Wales, where you spent a lot of your childhood. <laughs> You could live anywhere in England. I mean, I'm pretty sure most clubs would, if a Billy Vunipola came knocking, said, yes, please, I'll have him. Why do you live here? The whole point behind it was to play with my brother. So Saracens was the team at the time. We tried to get to Wasps together that when, when they were back at, in Acton, but it didn't work out. So came to Saris and here I am. But we weren't the first, you know, my, my dad and the era after him were kind of the beginning of this new um, Tongans coming or Samoans coming to England. And that was all tied to the Rugby World Cup, right? The 99 Rugby World Cup. Yeah. Was that the first time your dad came over here and then the opportunity to play in Wales yeah. came off the back of that? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, my dad wasn't the first one to come over here. Uh, I don't actually know the ins and outs of it, but I know that Dalupe's dad was one of the first out here playing in Ebervale in Wales. And then after the World Cup, a lot more of them stayed. And there was never an intention to stay here long term, but my grandfather saw kind of an opportunity for us as a family to, to make a new living out here. So I was very lucky with my parents because once we made the decision to play rugby, it was a full-time job and we were like eight, nine years old. I, that is very young. Yeah, my dad got... You realise that now as an adult, right? I do, I do. You are almost romanticised in a way. People look at Pacific Island players and just assume that you'll pitch up and mm. be absolutely brilliant. Is that a lot of pressure? Pressure is deemed a lot of times as a negative thing, mm. but it's, it's also an opportunity to, to go out there and make a mark, mm. make a name for yourself and kind of state, state your claim to whatever they say you are. Mm. Now, you're in this place where you haven't been selected and your teammates are all in squad, in camp, preparing yeah. for a big tournament and a big project. And you've been there and you know exactly what's going into this. What is it you draw on now to help keep you focused and motivated? When things like this happen, setbacks happen, you always try and blame other people blame other things for things that you can control. So, you know, I didn't get selected because I, didn't, I am deemed not to be playing well enough. So once you agree with that, you can move forward. But if you sit and feel sorry for yourself and blame everyone else, then there's never a, a basis from where you can like kick on and move on, both mentally and physically. You did a really interesting interview where you spoke about um, Eddie 
basically sitting down with you in what was it, 21, and saying, you're not selected. And then you turn to therapy. Yeah. And it's interesting because Hask asked you in 2020, have you ever considered therapy? And you said, no, I'm good, I pray. Mm. And then a year later, a big hurdle in your route. Yeah. Why then? This was more about performance mm. rather than what I believed in, because yeah. I'll never not believe. It was just, I needed something more than just turning up, training, going home, going through that process of not really doing anything, not really challenging myself. Mm. And that's what I needed to do was challenge myself rather than expecting my coaches to be like, right, Bill, we need to do this. And me turning around and being like, here's the plan. Yeah. yeah. And I needed some, an outside voice that was just going to tell me straight. I found someone that I respected. I, I met, met him and like we hit it off. And yeah, he helped me a lot. He's still helping me a lot. Would you in hindsight say, that that is a tool you could have used sooner in your career because by this stage you'd already been a professional player for a decade yeah it's interesting for me that it took you 10 years of going to the gym mm. to realize you could also gym this guy yeah see this is the thing it took me so long to get to that stage because i just felt like i was indestructible and until i got all my injuries i felt like god broke me down because i was too arrogant too confident in my own powers and I didn't rely on God enough, which I didn't. You had to break the same arm three times. <laughs> yeah. It's a good lesson to learn. And I needed someone to challenge me and help me to move away from that fear of getting injured again. That fear that you carry, you know, some people after a big injury aren't the same players, so. Because it's trauma. Yeah. Yeah. But. Now I feel like I'm back to just like doing it. Yeah. And now the next stage is what we talked about before, the instincts, believing in myself. It's just a, a tough balance between being confident and being arrogant. Mm. And I was probably too far the arrogant side. It's unusual though for a big, burly Pacific guy to go sit on the couch of a therapist and go talk about their feelings. Yeah, it is. Or is, or sh should it be unusual? I never really thought of it like that. To be like, oh, this is taboo for a Tongan guy to go and talk to a psychologist. It was yeah. just like, right, what's the next tool that I can use? Mm. And your mom is a minister. Yes. What did she say? This is the thing with my mom is that your parents will tell you how they feel, but it's then on you to decide how you take it. Mm. So for me, it's like, like I said before, I don't really care because this is the next tool that I think will help me build this house. So why would I not build the house? Just because my mum said, I don't think you should, you should use a screwdriver when I should use a screwdriver to put my house together. Do you think it should be something that teams should teach young players from a younger age? It's funny you ask that because we are starting to do that at Saracen's now. We have Callum Clark, who's an ex-player, and he is basically our sitting psychologist. We have a minister who's at Saracens that I talk to every week, just like about anything, you know, like what food I ate last night, like just general conversation. Yeah, it doesn't all have to be mm. like... And the option is there. If you need it, you can use it. Yeah. That's why I love this club, man. We're just, we're just looking for ways to to be better mm. and like you said there, the option is there. I went and found it myself, but now we're catering for it. Thank you, Billy. Thank you.